welcome back to the Roarcast, presented by Jag One Physical Therapy. Brand new episode this week, but same sport, and I, you know, part of me wishes we could talk about golf every week. But unfortunately, this will be our last week of golf. We're, uh, I'm Kyle Matrician, joined, as always, most podcasts anyway, most. by Mike Kowalski. I'd say over 95% of yeah, podcasts. Yeah, we, really we, got a good, we got a good percentage. We got a Hall of, Hall of Fame percentage. We do. We do. We do. Um, this week, uh, we had we had Jennifer Wang on last week from the women's golf team. And this week, we are speaking to Arjun Puri uh, from New Delhi, originally from New Delhi, India, but he, he uh, played his high school golf in South Carolina. Uh, he's a recent graduate, mm -hmm. and he's looking at his options in terms of playing professionally. You might see him at the Masters at some point. At it some might point, happen. you might. And you might, might see happen. me caddying for him. Yeah. Probably not. More likely, <laughs> probably if not. And, probably and not. Well, if we if we if we wind up playing golf with them, uh, we can work a win. We can maybe, work some wins. Yeah, maybe. I mean, um, just just some you know VIP access at major tournaments. That's all we're asking. We're not I'd be asking fine with that lot. too. Yeah, I'd be fine. We're, with we're that okay. Too. Totally fine. <laughs> no, it's a really good combo with with Arjun. A uh, really good kid. I think you're you're really gonna enjoy uh, hearing from him. Uh, I've got a great sense of humor, which I think you're, is going to come out on, on uh, the conversation. So it was great speaking with him. It's good that, you know, that we covered both of our golf programs. It's not going to be the last you hear about golf on this podcast because we're rolling into summer months and Kyle goes out just about every week. So, you know, Mike, we're going out this year together. Though. You're, you're, you're going to hear doing? more about his game. And I know everybody's dying to hear about, you know, Kyle's adventures and Hopefully he doesn't get injured on the golf course this year. So. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we talked about that last year. No injuries. <laughs> injury free. No injuries this year. Injury free since. Um, I'm injury free since it's been less than a year. It happened last. We need year. to get. You know what? In the office, we're gonna put up like one of those signs, like X amount of days since Kyle's been injured. <laughs> That's that might be accident free. A accident free since <laughs> for you know, and then just start it from zero whenever the inevitable occurs. Yeah, it'll happen at some point. <laughs> But we're going to take a quick break uh, and not talk about Kyle's injury follies and all that stuff. We'll be back with Arjun. You're listening to the Roarcast presented by Jag One, so stick around. At Athletic Brewing Company, we've built America's first craft non-alcoholic brewery. We've created a lineup of award-winning non-alcoholic beers. Our beers are made with organic grains and start at only 50 calories. Athletic beers are perfect for anyone who loves being healthy and active, but also loves to enjoy great tasting beer with friends. To give us a try, go to athleticbrewingcompany.com and use code ATHLETIC20 for 20% off your first order. We all know what comes with being a fan, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. Share a Coke with a friend. Coca-Cola, the official beverage of the Columbia Lions. We take care of the whole recovery process, getting them back to the level they were before they got injured, and many times even better. What's involved is preserving dreams. The first thing I do with any athlete is figure out their goals and then try to make a plan based upon that. One of the things that people don't quite understand about team physicians is how invested we are in these people's lives. We don't look at you as a guy with a shoulder problem. We try to understand what it is that makes you tick. Welcome back to uh, our part two of golf podcasting with Arjun Puri, a senior on the men's golf team. So Arjun, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on this show. Yeah, congrats on graduating too, uh, part of commencement last week. Uh, why don't you tell us how you were taking in uh, the virtual show la last week? Um, I mean, it was, it was pretty sad that we couldn't have an in-person commencement, but I thought Columbia did its best to send us off in a nice way. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty exciting. We got to watch class day with you know, all my friends and then commence with my family. It was a good way to end my four years at Columbia. Before we get into uh, Columbia, since this is the first time we've had you on the podcast, we do want people to know that uh, you're from New Delhi, India. So can you just tell us um, kind of how long you grew up there? And then I know you went to Heritage Academy in South Carolina. So and just kind of when you made the transition and, uh, and then eventually how you found Columbia. Yeah, so I'm from India. I'm from New Delhi. 
that's where I did most of my schooling till I was 16. Uh, following that, my last years of high school, I decided to move to Hilton Head, South Carolina, where I attended Heritage Academy and the International, which is my school, and the International Junior Golf Academy. It's not where, a bad place to move to. You know, you picked, you picked oh, a pretty good spot. Yeah, the, definitely. Some good <laughs> weather out there. Yeah. So moved up there and finished my last years of high school. I was able to manage golf and academics much better than I would have had I been back home. And while I was in Hilton Head, I was playing a lot of junior tournaments. And that's when my recruiting process began for college golf. And it ended up working with me coming to Columbia, which I'm grateful for. When did you start playing golf? Because, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a popular sport. I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, is it, is, it, is, it, is it growing in India? Yeah, they, it is growing quite a lot. I mean, if you think about it, there weren't many people playing till like 50, 60 years back. And now there are a lot of good juniors, amateurs, and professionals coming from India. So it's definitely a growing sport. I would say it's still not accessible by the entire, by the majority of the people in that country. So most people who join golf have somehow had some family member, some relation to the sport. I was super, I was lucky my dad's an avid golfer and he introduced me to the sport at a young age. I did not pick it up in like a competitive way till I was like 10. And that's when I really enjoyed it. So I started going, playing tournaments across India because that's how you competed. And, and from there on, I just kept loving the sport as the years went. And then by the time I was in high school, you know, I started thinking that maybe this is something I might want to seriously pursue at some point in my life. And that's how the decision came to eventually send me to the U.S. since, you know, this is where the PGA Tour is. This is where the best golfers play. And if you want to be the best, you got to compete against the best. I want to ask you, since you lived in Hilton Head for a little while. Sorry, Mike, taking over the podcast with Mike Golf. Have you, uh, I've, I've only played at a few courses in Hilton Head, but the last time I was there, I played at Golden Bear. Have you played at Golden Bear? No, that's actually one of the few I haven't. I've oh, played, come on. No, I've played, I mean, my favorite course there is Harbor Town. Yeah, you've definitely played I at think. much nicer courses in Hilton Head than I have, so continue. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah, they host the RBC Heritage. Mm -hmm. It's just an unbelievable track. It's probably like my favorite golf course in the U.S. They have a couple of, unreal golf courses in the entire area i know one of our golfing alumni he's currently on the latin america tour harrison she he plays out of berkeley hall which is just off the island or he used to play out of berkeley hall that's also a fantastic place and it's just yeah every other golf course is just spectacular in that area and my quick st quick story uh, I went down to Hilton Head, my wife and I did for, I think our first wedding anniversary a few years ago. And uh, I went and played Golden Bear. That's when I played. And the first six holes, I mean, I'm just golfing with two random guys that I don't know that were, that were like old. They're probably in their fifties, sixties. And I mean, I think I was like one over after six, which for me is like amazing. Right. Cause I'm like a, I'm like a, probably like a 16 handicap. All right. So I was one over after six. It was incredible. And these guys thought I was so much better than I was. And then there's like the sixth hole. You, it was like a, such an easy shot, like a hundred yards into a, a slightly downhill green that had, but you couldn't hit it long. It was just all water behind it. And I hit it long, put it in the water and then reality check the rest of the way through. Yeah, so. that's pretty common with golf. I think, yeah. <laughs> you know, one shot feel, can, can it all go away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that happens almost every time, like someone or the other plays for well, sure. I'll talk about. about go, sorry, go uh, ahead. No, I was just gonna chime in with my only golf thing because I I play very little. Like I I enjoy it, but I just don't get out that much. But if there is water on any hole, like it just it's in my head. I'm going like it it could be like twenty yards away. I'm gonna. I'm going to flub the shot and it's going straight in the drink. Like it's Mike just, and I played at a nice little like par three a yeah, couple years back what, in the summer. That's what I'm there. talking about. <laughs> was there, there was no water on that course. No, there's there. water. There's a one oh, hole. Oh, there was that one hole. It's the tee and then like a little bit of water, maybe like 20 yards in front of it. Like, and like, it's just in my head and I just, I just club it. Right. And I just I forgot. But I put, I think I put two balls in there. <laughs> 
that. Yeah, it, it happens to all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sport's not easy for sure. Well, let's talk about year golf, Arjun. All right, and I I do want to talk about the fact that the men's golf team got to play uh, at the Doc Gimler, Doc Gimler, right? Doc Gimler Invitational at St. John's uh, last month, and you got to compete in that. So you and on top of that, you finished fifth with a stellar final round bogey free five under 65 uh 565 right i'm gonna look yeah 565 i had it memorized should have trusted myself uh yeah. so just talk about for you like how nice it was just first of all to be able to compete uh you know in your columbia not uniform but you know under the columbia logo i guess uh one more time before you graduated yeah, I think it was it was super exciting for sure. I know uh, the Ivy League was one of the few conferences that uh, canceled play in the fall and in the spring. Uh, we were all I know it all started in spring of 2020 when our when everything got canceled because when the pandemic first hit. Uh, just based on that, to be honest, we weren't really sure if we were going to compete. I know Coach Muller, our head coach, really wanted to give us like this one farewell to sum up our four years at Columbia. And he worked really hard. And, you know, shout out to the entire Columbia Athletics uh, who worked hard to just make sure that we got to live our dream for one last time just to play. And for all of us, I can say the entire team that competed was super excited about it. You know, we didn't, we did not get to practice as much as we would like as we had several restrictions, but every player competed, competed their hearts out. And I'm really proud of the entire team for giving it their best and including my seniors, Dan Terrell and John Robertson. Those guys played really well as well. And to just play my last event for Columbia with in the same group as all my teammates, because that is something that doesn't happen in college golf. You usually play with players from other teams, but given the COVID restrictions, they had you playing with your with your teammates. So to have the coaches, the parents following the entire group, supporting every player, get it, me being able to finish my final college round with Dan and John, who, you know, the three of us started our freshman year together. I remember Dan and I had our official visit as well to finish it off with them, with coach watching all of us, with the coaches, coach Muller and coach Ben watching all of us was, was pretty special. And yeah, I think I played a pretty solid final round. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I did. that was <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely a good way to end it. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to ask you, because I was looking at, I was looking at your round scores before we got on here. And on day two, well, it was three day tournament, correct? Uh, it or was like you guys... a two. It was a two day, but three round tournaments. We played thirty six holes the first day. Okay, your second round at that tournament, you know, you 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 had just played your, you know, your first round because you like you said you played thirty six holes on day one, and you shot an even par, so you're sitting there at even. But then you come out in the second round, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you started on ten. And, you know, not the, not the start that you wanted, bogey, bogey, bogey. Uh, but you did get some birdies then on your second nine to kind of, and you finished with a three over. Uh, so that put you at three over going into the final round before you shot that five under 65 to charge all the way back and finish fifth. But like what changed for you from round two to round three? Was it, was it the weather that from the, between the two days or what do you think changed? Um, to be honest, like, uh, if I was to break down my first day, I had this one stretch from, I think it was like hole 13 on my first day, on my first round to like hole six. So maybe it was like a period of like eight, 10 or 11 holes where I just had seven bogeys, I think. And that, cause i I was probably two, I was, I think two under or something after 12 on my first round or after 11. So I was playing good golf. I think I just, a couple of not so good shots here and there, a couple of bad misses, a couple of bad breaks, I should say I had, like on one hole, I had like a mud ball. And so when there's mud on the golf ball, it can just, it's kind of out of your control. And that happened in a couple of places. And 
that's how I started dropping shots. It was good following that to come back with a few birdies to close to close out the round. And I think there's nothing much that changed in the final round. Like I said, I feel with the COVID, since the pandemic hit, I went back home to India and I think I put in a lot of work over the past year. So I knew that competing after a year and a half, it was just time before all my hard work showed. And I think the final round was, yes, a, you know, to shoot a 65, a couple of things have to fall your way, which they did. And it was just some solid golf, didn't let any mistakes compound. Uh, I kind of knew entering the final round that I needed maybe a 61 or a 62 to have a chance of winning. And I guess after the front nine, it did look like I could have done that. But the back nine at the red course is pretty hard. It's it's long and it was getting pretty windy. So it, it was just a grind to keep making bars. And somehow, you know, it all added up to 65. I was going to say the, uh, I think, for me, all 18 at the red course is pretty hard. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, I think it was it was really interesting how you broke that down. I mean, you know, most people in a normal when you're playing competitively, it's obviously different when you're playing casually, like Kyle and sometimes me play. But like this, to know you have to like, all right, I got to probably shoot a 61 here. Were you being a little extra aggressive on your your approaches and everything, or were you just you know to try to get to that score? Oh, it was. Uh, that's. And that's quite funny because on a normal time I would have been more aggressive, but I just before my round, uh, as I was mentally preparing for it, I just thought, you know, I've been playing good golf the whole time. I know things haven't been falling my way, but and to be fair, to shoot 65 or whatever, to shoot 60 to 61, you do not have to hit every flag. You're allowed to make bars, you're allowed to miss shots. Mm -hmm. So don't so as a matter of fact i said don't be aggressive like just play play percentage golf try to first thing is to get it on the fairway or something where you can go for the for the green and then once you have a favorable yardage or a favorable club try to be a little more aggressive but make sure you don't compound uh, don't keep compounding your mistakes because it can be a big momentum changer if you have like one or two bogeys so just as long as you keep making pars, you know, you'll make like one twenty footer on a hole. You might stick it close to five feet in another hole. You might hit a par five and two and two putt for birdie. So just keep taking it one shot at a time. Yeah, that, that was pretty much my mindset. It's great advice because again, I, the little I do play, if I get if I get have a bad hole, I'm trying to overcompensate on the next hole. And you're like, I gotta try to get like a birdie on this one, like if I can do it, because I just played so pair terribly on that and i'm you know again i'm not competing in the tournament but that's that's a really interesting mindset to have yeah mike, mike we're getting oh. back out there this summer we're doing it yeah let's do it why not we're, we're taking arjun with us <laughs> yeah. arjun, uh, arjun you can caddy yeah definitely <laughs> no, i love no. caddy yeah he doesn't have to caddy he can actually play <laughs> arjun where are you right now we didn't ask that before we started recording oh uh, i'm in new jersey right now i just Perfect. You, in here. So are yeah. we. You can, so you're coming away. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, we can always play anytime. I'm down where, for it. Uh, what's what town are you in, if you don't mind us asking? Uh, I'm in Secaucus. Oh, I've just, Arjun. Yeah. We are all within, We're right there. 15, within 20 like... minutes of each other right now. <laughs> I'm in Lyndhurst. Yeah. Mike's in Woodridge. That's yeah, then we got doing. ourselves a tea time. Yep, here we go. <laughs> what are you doing on Friday? <laughs> yeah. Where do you play? Do you, where do you play when you're out in Jersey? I've been playing the last couple of days in Montclair Golf okay. Club. Yeah, yep. with a buddy of mine. Still looking at a place. And as I keep firming up my summer plans, I think that's one of it. Looking at a good place to play where I'll be based for the foreseeable future. What I plan to compete. So still figuring all that out. If you need a caddy when you go pro, Arjun, look me up. Oh, definitely. You'll be the first one I'll call. Yeah, I know. I know I will be. <laughs> Remember this. <laughs> they say you play basketball, you play football, you play tennis, but you can't play boxing. You have to fight. I remember the night where it went completely downhill. It was a massive tumor that had wrapped itself around my spine. Dr. Hartle, who was my surgeon, you know, he aced it. They resurrected me.
On August 9th, 2014, I became the WBA middleweight champion of the world. John, we're outside of JAG1. Tell us why this place is so important to your patients. We're serving New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania as an outpatient physical therapy and occupational therapy center. We've worked very hard in the last two years to bring us close to 100% in network in all our facilities. We treat every type of pathology and illness and surgical intervention, taking that patient's needs and building the rehab program around that goal and attaining the goal. So you talked a little bit about being in New Jersey. You're probably going to play in some tournaments. So talk about what the future lies for you now that you, you've graduated. Um, I'm going to go professional. That's, that's my goal. And the ultimate goal is to be on the PGA Tour. In terms of when I'm going to go professional, we, I'm still weighing my options. The, for now, the goal is to try to uh, compete in some amateur events and win. I think I want, before I go professional, I want to, try to be up on top of some leaderboards, play some top amateur events. See, every amateur's goal is to compete in the U.S. amateur and try to win it. I think that's my goal for the next, that's my goal, the U.S. amateurs in August. So qualifies in July. In the meantime, there are about many events around the U.S., but a lot in the Northeast, but you've got some in the Southeast that I intend to play on, a play in. Some I might some I might have to qualify for. Maybe also try to play in a few professional tournaments as an amateur. So a lot going on, trying to work on a schedule, but the ultimate goal for the next few months is try to compete the US amateur, try to win it, and then see what happens after that. And I think uh, hopefully go professional by August. So just kind of, I, sorry, Kyle, one more follow up here. Just walk us through the process of like how you schedule and get invited to these events, just so people have an idea outside of the golf world. Um, so a lot of these events are based on your ranking, whether it's your world amateur ranking, it's your resume. I think those are two main factors. There are, depending on the tournaments, a lot of them do send, and a lot of tournaments also have exemption categories based on your region, how you've done in certain events. So you apply to these events if you meet any one of the requirements or they think you're worthy of an invite they send you one if you're not you you have to go and qualify and usually qualifiers work they have about i would say let's say you have a qualifier will have about 70 people so the top three or the top four get into the event so the qualifiers are brutal not gonna lie because it's like a 18 hole shootout and if you're not shooting in the 60s, you're not making it, which it's, it's tough, but that's how golf goes. And yeah, that's, that's amateur golf right there. Have you competed? That's what I was gonna ask before. Have you competed? Uh, you know, you said your goal is to, you know, qualify for the US amateur and, and win it, which would be amazing. Uh, yep. But have you competed? I mean, obviously you've competed in the qualifiers before, correct? Uh, I've actually only played the U.S. Amateur Qualifier once Okay. because, yeah, uh, it was like three years back and I, I did not get into it. But, yeah, it's always been one of those things where it's in July, mid, late July, and some things always come up, whether it's that I had to go back home to India or last year you had the pandemic or something else showed up or just something did not match my schedule and I wasn't able to do it. So I'm pretty excited to do it this year. Um, so let's, I'm probably gonna put this before because we kind of got it into a good rhythm, but I wanted to ask you one more thing about kind of your Columbia career. And so I wanted you to talk about some other moments with the team or tournaments that kind of stick out to you that you wanna talk about and uh, make, again, make all of our hundreds and thousands of listeners aware of. Yeah. Uh... 
I mean, yeah, sure. I so I started in fall of 2017, and we we definitely did not we we had a subpar freshman uh, freshman year, and just and I feel the teams really kept uh, building up, and Coach Mo has done a fine job with helping us with our practices. He's done an amazing job with getting great players to our program. And I think my, our highlight was in 2019 when we played, we won back-to-back -to -back tournaments in the fall. We won the Cornell Invitational and the UConn Invitational. I think we won UConn by 17 or 19. It was some big number. And it was pretty cool to be a part of that. I think uh, while I, I, I did no, I did compete in that event, but also the entire team. It felt pretty cool. I know Dan and I were discussing, Dan Terrell and I were talking about it and how from freshman year, like in those two years, we had seen so much change in how each person approached a competition and how they gave it their best. So definitely that moment stuck out. I think we were in 2019, we were the IV team to look out uh, at. And, you know, if not for the pandemic, I think it was pretty safe to say that we we were amongst the favorites to make regionals and you never know even go towards nationals just based on the trajectory we had as a team. Uh, I got to ask you this question because I asked uh, Jennifer last week. Let's see. It's it's the question. Have you ever uh, have you ever made a hole in one? Yes, I've actually made three. Three. Yeah. Except for the fact that Jennifer hasn't, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, hard. Tell us, no. where, where, where was your first one? And how old were you? Um, I honestly don't remember my exact age. I would say maybe 12. Oh, my goodness. I could you be wrong, but myself. yeah, I, it was <laughs> the first hole. It was in Delhi Golf Club. It was their shorter course. It was just a nine-hole course. And the first hole was a part three. It was... 137 yards I think if I remember and I hit a seven iron and it was and I just made it and then I think if I'm not mistaken I made like an eight or a ten on my next hole <laughs> I was just I was so excited <laughs> by that hole in one that I couldn't <laughs> it was not it was one of my worst rounds I had played in a long time but you know who remembers that have you made one competing yeah. like for Columbia no, I haven't. I've made one in a competition and it was, it wasn't, it was actually the week before I joined Columbia. I was, playing oh, wow. the, it was in Scotland. It was, it was the British boys, this, uh, this junior event there. And it was the first two rounds of stroke play. And it was in that, it was the second round. And it was, I think the 15th hole and if I'm not mistaken, it was, I think, 162 yards blowing 30 miles, 35 miles far into the wind. And I hit this five iron that I just kind of did not let it get up in the air, more like a chip, like a chip shot I hit. Mm -hmm. And it just had a couple bounces and went in. Just chipped it 162 yards into the hole, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a big deal. laughs> yeah. Oh, unbelievable. One day, awesome, Kyle. One, one day. You'll I've come that. close. I told Jennifer last week. I've, I've, you know, I mean, I feel like if I feel like a lot of people that haven't made a hole in one are like, oh, I've come so close, like within like a foot of the hole. Yeah, I've heard that. Heard that a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's hard to join that elite club. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I do, and then, I, and then I can caddy for you. Hopefully, it's the <laughs> next time we play. The next time we play. Oh, I love it. Yes, let's love do it. it. This is great. So uh, let's get back to your, your kind of career. Are you, is anybody like on the current team or any, anybody like who's helping you kind of achieve your professional goals right now? Who, who, what are you, who are you working with, I guess? Um, of, or... So I've got, uh, I mean, first and foremost, without anything, it's my, my parents are my support system and they've been my parents and my entire family. They've been supporting me before Columbia through Columbia and even now, like I think they're all they're all there for me at all times in terms of my coaching and I mean and of course like my parents they my dad's an avid golfer but just generally guiding me in the right way. 
me. So that's a big thing. And in terms of golf per se, I've got my coach, my swing coach, this person called Kevin Sprecker. He's based out of Sleepy Hollow Country Club. He's been helping me for the past two years. I have another performance coach, Ian Highfield, who's been guiding. He's been with me for like four or five years and he's more like an elder brother type figure and he helps me both on and off the golf course and he's super cool and he's we've put in a lot of work and yeah and even coach Muller he's I go to him for a lot of advice he's great with it he knows what my goals are I think he's seen many Columbia people, uh, golfers in the past have similar goals and just trying to and he's guiding me as best as he can and that's yeah that's that's the main system around which I'm working. Well, to tell us what the best part about playing for Coach Muller is. Let's plug him a little bit. He's been here a while, had some good success. Oh, uh, I think he's he's pretty super laid back, yet he cares a lot about his players. And it's pretty funny because I'm known to be the one I mess around a lot with him. And I think he takes it in good stride. Like, we have had moments in tournaments where I've, we've gone back and forth, just kind of, just some, you know, some making fun of each other. And I think he's he's taken it well, even in like heated moments, I've tried to light, lighten the mood a little bit. And yeah, but like I said, he cares a lot about his players and he gives it his best, you know, he's always on time. You know, he's got everything we need. He can do a little better with snacks at times, that I'll say, <laughs> but he's been improving. I keep making sure that he does a good job, but yeah, I mean, anytime you get him, him. Who's going to keep him in line now that you're, you're graduated? I'm not really sure. You know, I'm still trying to see who's next. Maybe I'll still have to continue with it. Just send him the constant reminder. You there know, you I go. hope he got all the bars lined up. <laughs> You know, he knows I hate peanut butter, but yet he just stocks his bags with that. And it's like, come on, coach. Like, I think it's intentional at this point. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, anytime you get to compete for Columbia, it's, it's, it's super fun. And, you know, he's always there and he does a good job of supporting us and helping us in our practice rounds. And he always makes it fun. Like he kind of, in the back nine, we generally have a competition between us, teammates, and it's great. Yeah. Uh, he actually plays a lot of qualifying rounds with us. I know it's nice. not in tournaments and it's super fun. Like anytime he beats you, it's, it's a bad day to be a Columbia <laughs> golfer. So he's one of those, he's just a super solid golfer. Like he's going to shoot 75 every time he's going to hit his two iron or four iron off the tee, even if the fairway is a hundred yards wide, <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's the one to beat. Do you have a two iron in your bag? I actually do. I have, it's it's one of those clubs which is pretty interchangeable. There's like a two iron, a three iron, and a five wood. All three of them are like fighting for that fourteenth club, mm -hmm. and it just depends, you know. If uh, if I need to hit a lot of two forty yard tee shots, I'll pick that two iron. But if it's like I need to get on par fives with a wood, like if I need, or if I have like approach shots to greens, which are like two forty yards, I'll use like a five wood or a three iron. So if I need depends. to hit 240, I'm using my driver and hope I hit it 100% and hope it goes 240. Yeah, I've, I mean, I was the same. And, you know, some some players in the past from Colombia have, have only hit it 240. They've still done how far well. Do you, how far do you hit your drives? Uh, I would say if I fly it 280, 280, 285. What's the uh, yeah. furthest measured, measured drive you've ever hit? Do you know? Maybe like three. Uh, I think recently we played in Fort Worth, and there was like this one par four, which was four seventy yards downwind. It was just blasting downwind, and I had like ninety yards to the green, or a hundred oh, or yeah. something like that. Nice. So you cranked yeah. it like three fifty, three seventy, something like that. Yeah, downwind, and then maybe a little downhill. Actually, no. It was just downwind, and then when we were going back. The other way, I think we probably hit our drivers like 230 <laughs> or 240. Yeah, well, that was really cranking. Yeah, def yeah, that was a pretty brutal day. Oh, what do you think, Kyle? 
I could talk golf with Arjun some more. We can uh, still do that after we stop recording. We can. That's true. So we'll wrap up this episode and Kyle and me and Arjun are still going to talk golf and set up a tea time in New Jersey because we're within like, we're all like 10 minutes apart from Arjun plays at every, all the places that Arjun mentions, I've never played at because I'm like, yeah, I can't Can't get in there, but we'll we'll continue this discussion offline. Uh, We want to thank him for joining our podcast. Uh, Yeah. Good luck with everything. And we hope to see you uh, on the pro tour sometime. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me over. It was super fun talking to y'all. All All right, so that's going to do it for the golfs on this season of the Roarcast. Uh, For Kyle Matrician, I'm Mike Kowalski. Uh, You make sure you check us out on Wednesday mornings, 10 a.m. on Twitch, or listen to the replays on our major podcast platforms, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts. Just look for go search for Columbia Athletics and subscribe today. Leave us some comments. So that'll do it for this episode of the Warcast presented by Jag One. Talk to you next week.